today we're talking about the Villa dei Misteri, which is it's um, an ancient Roman villa just outside of Pompeii. I think it was super fancy schmancy to be honest i think it was one of the uh, one of the, the the big very expensive villas well i think i pretty much know that um and um and it is mentioned in it's now gone live um in my new series which is the history of art beyond the palette style so this um so there is a, a video that mentions the Villa de Mysteri, which is, I am delighted to say, now live on my website. I will promote it hopefully later today. It's all been happening this week. Um, and so you can go to it uh, via beyondthepalette.co.uk or you can go straight to it, uh, BTP TV, so Beyond the Palette Television, BTP TV, uh, dot beyond the palette dot co dot uk. Uh, but, so, the Villa dei Misteri, these mysteries. Okay, um, this is going to be fun because there's lots of images. Um, yeah, so it found just a bit of context. Um, so, Villa dei Misteri, um, this little lady was found um, in this exact position um, when Villa dei Misteri was excavated um it wasn't excavated along with most of the rest of pompeii as i said it was slightly outside pompeii um so this was um the the villa was only actually found in 1909 i want to say it was it was like the the beginning of the 20th century uh whereas the the rest of pompeii was excavated middle of the 18th century um so she was found lying at the entrance of this villa um oh what was she doing what was she doing did she you know did she just happen to be there was she a member of the household was she working there was she about to take part in a bacchic ritual because that's what we believe the villa de misteri was all about um the it's um so when i say the villa de misteri i'm talking about a room in a villa uh, called the Villa dei Misteri because it's full of frescoes, this room, but we're not entirely sure exactly what they mean. It's a mystery, so the house of the mysteries, uh, but we're fairly sure that art historians pretty much agree that these, um, that these frescoes do depict actually a marriage to Bacchus. Um, like a sort of a mystic marriage. So I'm just going to show you, just to give you a little bit of um, more of an overview of the of the villa. So here we go. So you can see this, this, this um, frescoes uh, along three walls of the villa created in the first century BC. Um, and um, yeah, and they tell a story. Not 100% sure exactly all of the details um, or exactly what everything means but it's pretty exciting nonetheless. So this lady that you can see over on the left hand side with her hand on her hip, this is the first figure that you see or I think that you're meant to see as you walk into the room so the room the, the frescoes are on three sides there is uh, there is a window on one side and and you walk through a pretty small door so i'm wondering whether this uh, this lady because she was found outside the door um so was she about to go in i don't know it really intrigues me it's 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 fabulous i need to go there um so yeah so this lady with her hand on her hip it looks as though she's just kind of as we would as visitors come or as and as um as you know people from the the first century bc would have done just come through the door and and so this is the the first part of the ceremony or whatever is going on i'm going to change the image so you can see her a little bit better um sorry i, I hope i didn't just sniff there we go so here she is from uh, from a different angle so you can see she's walking and she looks quite demure this lady um she 
has a veil which tells us that possibly she is a bride um, so a, a mortal woman who is about to get married to Bacchus in um, like sort of not as um, to become one of his wives. Do you remember we were talking about the Maynads um, a couple of weeks ago? Well, this this is the the, the Maynad ceremony. Uh, so she is potentially the initiate. Uh, she's approaching this lady who's sitting on a throne um, possibly she is a, a priestess the lady on the throne um, possibly sort of presiding over the this part of the ceremony uh, she certainly seems to be encouraging this little um, little boy who's stark naked and he is reading from a scroll he's really concentrating he's he's lovely you can see that her hand is just placed on the back of his neck in sort of encouragement um, I feel it's it's absolutely full of these little touches um, these frescoes whoever the artist was and it's quite likely that the overall design or the finishing touches and everything were were, um, were created by the same artist because it's quite uh, uniform all the way around in its fabulousness and in its detail uh, so there are little, yes, lovely, if I say psychological touches, do you know what I mean? Sort of you can see the psychology, the, dy the dynamics between different groups of people and different people. So I feel like she's really encouraging him. Yeah, come on, you can read this scroll. And what he's probably reading are the Bacchic rites. So he's probably um, sort of reading all about the, the initiation ceremony and what's going to happen, sort of declaration of, uh, of the ceremony. Then we have a lady over to the right hand side um, who is sort of a part of but separate to as well from this first grouping. She is carrying a tray or a plate of something that we're assuming to be food. Um, so probably cakes or bread or something like that. Not entirely sure. She isn't interacting with anybody in the fresco but what she's doing is she's looking out to us so she is including us um, in in the proceedings we're implicated by her um, by her gaze out at us um, wearing a sort of purple robe around her waist the purple robe is uh, ubiquitous in this in this fresco it appears again and again and again she has a, um, a crown on her head of leaves. That's a myrtle crown. Now, myrtle was actually more, um, more commonly associated with Aphrodite than it was to Bacchus. So, and Aphrodite being the goddess of love, that's sort of another suggestion that this might be a marriage. So the, the, the veil of the initiate, the sort of the, the, the fact that the little boy is uh, reading this, this scroll, so there's an important announcement, um, the sort of reference to love. She's also carrying in her hand, um, you can't see it so well, but she's carrying a laurel leaf. Now, if the laurel was around her head, that would, be like sort of victory and triumph uh, but she's not she's just carrying it um so i'm wondering whether actually she is like a serving girl or perhaps the cook because they use laurel in cooking and she's carrying a plate or something i don't know i like we have absolutely no idea this could be the initiate as well so this could be that the initiate has taken her robes off and now she is carrying something and she is offering whatever she is carrying um as a well as, a, as an offering uh so lots of different uh, lots of different interpretations okay so then we come on to um a lovely group of three women uh, lovely, it's a lovely group of three women. So you can see the the, the first uh, grouping, and then the and then the the next grouping. So we have um, a lady with her back to us, who is she's actually holding up this purple robe on looks like a a tabletop. Now the lady to the um, sort of to the, the left as we're looking at this uh, this group of three um, she is 
assisting her, sort of holding up, holding up the, the robe. And she's looking very intently across at the woman to, I hope you can just see right over on the right hand side of the image, um, who is in fact pouring water onto this um, robe or onto the, the tabletop. So because of that, we think that probably this is a cleansing ritual that's taking place. Um, involving this purple robe. And what I love is the fact, so the serving girls looking out on us, so we as the audience are implicated, the group of three, they are absolutely absorbed in their activity. So, you know, they, they have no time at all there's nothing to do with the outside world within this this group so the the, the, the dynamics between them are, are, are very insular uh, but it's, it's obviously a delicate operation because the the girl on the right is looking very intently um uh, sorry the girl on the left as we're looking at it is looking very intently at the girl on the the right as we're looking and the woman with her back to us i mean it's a virtuoso piece of painting she's look you know look how kind of her bottom is slightly off the back of the the stool that she's sitting on um she has her her head turned but somehow we're still we can still be engaged with this scene even though her back is to us um and it's just you know you you feel this you feel the depth, don't you? You feel as though you could actually potentially walk into that space, which is, it is really quite an extraordinary, um, an extraordinary, extraordinarily accomplished uh, piece of, of fresco. So now, now the fun starts. So this is all quite calm, isn't it? This is all quite calm. The next figure on this first wall is, 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 this fellow here. Oh, so you can see better here in this image, um, the girl who was to the right of the painting, and I said that she was pouring water onto something. There you go, you can see her quite well here. Um, and then you have this guy. <laughs> oh, you notice the girl pouring the water has the, uh, the myrtle crown as well, as does he, and that's pretty much all he's wearing. Uh, he seems to be lost if i'm going to be kind i will say that he's lost in his own thoughts as he is providing actually a soundtrack to uh to the proceedings because what he's doing there is he's playing the lyre uh so i'm slightly covering the uh, the top of the lyre but he's he's playing there and yeah if i want to be kind i can say he's lost in his own thought which is perhaps why he has not noticed that his robe has all of a sudden fallen off. Um, or I could say that he is perhaps Selenus. And Selenus was Bacchus's um, like great mentor, tutor, and great friend. Um, he's the guy who taught Bacchus how to drink. Um, so if he is Selenus, then I think that his slightly unfocused look might be more due to the fact that he is completely banjoed. Don't know. Um, so yeah, so there he is, playing his lovely musical instruments, accompanied by the uh, little grouping in the next panel. So. Selenus is playing his lyre and then over to his right hand side uh, is this little group um, of, well it's a sort of, it's a, it's a weird Arcadian scene. The guy at the back is actually playing the pan pipes. Um, and then, I, and I think they're little satyrs because they've got little pointy ears. If you could, if you could see that. And then the, and then the young man f further forward from him is actually suckling a goat. And there's another little goat in the in the front scene. So providing music, but also, yeah, because I don't know Arcadia. Because maybe this is where the brides of Bacchus kind of end up, at least in their heads. I don't know. What I do know is, is that the woman to their right is not 
at all happy about what happens next. So Arcadia, whatever, she is completely freaked out. Uh, let me bring up a bigger image of her. Here she is. Um, isn't she absolutely brilliantly, brilliantly drawn? You can see the little guy with the ears actually over to the... Um, over to her left a little bit better like I'm, I'm, I'm like pulling back my hair as though I might have pointy ears just so so I could demonstrate I haven't got pointy ears my ears are perfectly normal um but look at it so she is like she's got a, a look of kind of fear on her face she's um you know slightly like she, she kind of looks as though she might want to just jump off that podium into the room and run away her body is twisting one way her head is twisting back um this cloak is brilliant because this is it's like it's framing her face so we're drawn to um to to her face and we can see once again the expression on her face it's it's really um you know you kind of if you ever knew what anyone was thinking which you you, you can't obviously but uh, but you know you kind of you get a a good feel for for what she's about here um her hand foreshortened so it looks as though you know so her you know we really feel as though her arm is going back in in space in the in the painting there's volume there's three dimensionality so this artist really knows how to work with um with light and shade doesn't he or she but i imagine it was a imagine it was a he um okay all that, but what is she so freaked out about? Well, she is freaked out about what is going on on the back wall. So this, this, um, this is the final fresco on one wall, and she's reacting to something on the back wall. And what she's reacting to um, is rah, this. So we have this other sort of Selenus figure um, who is giving um, a, a nymph satyr perhaps um, a drink of wine one would assume from this bowl I think what she's more concerned about is the freaky mask above his head that this other satyr is is holding up um that seems to be when you look at it exactly what she's um what she's reacting to what she's um you know so worried about understandably because that's not a particularly nice mask um as i say selenus he has appeared once again so probably this is his second appearance but what i want you to notice is just have a look at the way the mask lines up with the bowl of wine so this youth is i know is he drinking from the bowl or is he looking into it because to me i think he looks like he's not drinking he's just looking into that bowl and he will see his reflection but directly behind him, he will also be able to see the reflection of this mask, um, which makes me think about the, um, the when we were talking about the Greek symposium and the gorgon at the bottle of the drinking bowl um, that is slowly revealed as, uh, as the person drinking drinks more and more wine and gets more and more drunk. Um, and of course, as we get more and more drunk, um, we get less lovely. Um, although didn't a study show that if you have one glass of wine then you look nicer um, maybe that's just if everyone has one glass of wine then you look nicer I don't know perhaps you relax a little bit after one glass of wine after two glasses of wine it all goes completely wrong uh, so so yeah but I think that is um, that is a sort of reference to the the, the gorgon in the in the in the bottle of um, in the bottle <laughs> gorgon in the bottle pretty much uh, gorgon in the bottle of the drinking cup um and of course selenus is how those youths will end up eventually i mean not exactly like that but you know they're they're young and lovely at the moment and uh, and eventually they will end up older and um well if they're unlucky looking like um looking like where's he gone looking like looking like that playing the liar <laughs> you're not quite so good um in 
um, no, wrong one. Whoops. Um, so then over to the right of this image is the gentleman that this whole scene is basically all about. Um, unfortunately, this part is slightly damaged, but this is in the center of the back wall. And the guy that you can see lolling around there, absolutely pissed, is Bacchus. So this is his ceremony. It's all about him. There is an initiate about to marry him um, in, in, you know, in some way. Um, and he, I'm going to say, is probably not even going to remember it tomorrow. Um, so I love the way that he's been drawn. I mean, he's like, rawr. he's lying across the lap of somebody. We assume that um, that somebody is Ariadne, who is his mortal wife. Um, and he... I think has a, a a cup in one hand. Look again, just um, again. This is a great example of this sort of the, of the human interaction. Um, she's got her hand just resting over his chest. It's sort of quite it's quite proprietorial, but it's very um, it's just very natural. It's just very relaxed. It's very lovely. And then across his lap is propped his um, thyrsus, um, his staff with the um, ivy and sometimes the acorn and so on on the top that we, we spoke about a couple of weeks ago um, and yeah he is he's having a lovely time but uh, but yes the poor the poor lady over on the other wall is um, she's beginning to look worried perhaps as well she might be so if we move on the other side of Bacchus we have you have a lady on her knees and she is the, um, so she's holding up something and the thing that she's holding up is a purple robe. And then on the floor by, uh, beneath the purple robe is a wicker basket and it, that, that wicker basket is called a lichnon. Um, and that basket was very much associated with Bacchus. Um, so, uh, generally speaking, a lignon was just used to separate grain from chaff. So, kind of, you know, in agricultural stuff. Um, babies sometimes are put in it. It was just used as a, as a cradle or a basket for babies sometimes. And the story goes that um, it was in a basket such as this that Silenus found Bacchus and essentially um, bought him up and looked after him and taught him how to drink. But in these ceremonies, the lichnon was filled with things that... Um, that were used, um, that were, sorry, I need to turn this off. It's all, look, it's all going on today, isn't it? Um, the lichnon was filled with things that were used for the ceremony, essentially. So it would be, or that were appropriate to this ceremony. So um, a fruit, so an offering, something to eat. Um, sometimes the Selenus mask, um, so we've we've seen this mask, and I think that that was probably the Selena's mask, um, a wooden phallus. She says <laughs> that's a wooden phallus, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah. Ooh. So it's it's all things that are, are teaching the bride how to well, what's gonna what's gonna happen, how to be the bride of Bacchus, um, and then this purple robe for her to to wear so it's quite a, a just sort of um it's it's something it's a part of the fresco that helps as has helped very much to identify more what's going on here okay um and then this is a long 11s is today um and then we come to um the final oh there you go look you can see it better there and then we come to 
the final scenes and maybe this is, this is also probably what our our frightened lady was slightly concerned about so you can see the the lichen on there and the and the purple cloak and then next to that again sort of cutting the uh, uh, sort of in the in the corner of the fresco so this is um over to the right of the back wall as you're looking at the villa um, as you're looking in the room is this winged figure who is holding a whip and she is holding that aloft with intent um, and once again the artist has cut across the corner uh, because then in the 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 other on the other wall is this figure who is kneeling so this is certainly the initiate who's kneeling purple robe once again and she is getting a good old whipping because obviously when you get married to Bacchus you need to be whipped. Why not? I don't know. Um, you know you get whipped and you get looked after by some people so she's on the the knee of one person um, and she's there we go. She's on the knee of, uh, of one girl um, who is sort of comforting her perhaps a little bit. Um, there's another woman lady in attendance who is brandishing um, Bacchus's staff again, the, the, the Tharasus. Um, and then, you know, there's another one who's just having a great time. She's taking all her clothes off and she's having a dance. Um, and actually just up in her hands up there she's got a pair of symbols again absolutely beautiful just look at the the, the curve of the um of the drapery that really frames her 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 body her hips just really plays into the curves it's, that's a very very sexy bit of painting and then this poor girl is getting whipped i guess you could also say a sexy bit of painting um who knows um but this is one would assume then the end of the ceremony so the ceremony has ceremony has come to uh, a, a climax and then there is a window and i love this so got this bit and then you've got the window of the room which i don't know would is it too is it too fanciful to think about that window as the sort of the window of enlightenment, you know, as she's as her as the ritual is complete and her and her sort of transformation from mere mortal to bride of Bacchus, um, you know, that, that sort of moment of enlightenment? I don't know. It's definitely about a, a, a pause and um you know this sort of this, this space and this transformation and then the final image is this one here which um is again it's a bit hard to understand so which one is the initiate and which one is an attendant is, is I don't know so we have a, a lady in a purple robe who you would think okay so perhaps you know she's the initiate because she's been wearing purple all the way around or perhaps this it's this rather lovely girl who is seated and is having her hair done by the the girl in the purple robe so perhaps you know this is her at the the end of the ceremony what's quite interesting is that this sort of winged figure this winged little cupid figure um, is holding up a mirror and he's holding up the mirror to the seated woman but the woman who's standing behind her is the one who's looking in the mirror um, it's don't know it's it's very ambiguous don't know which one the initiate is you know perhaps the seated girl is about to be the next initiate and about to sort of start the process again um, who knows but there we go that was the um the villa dei misteri and i've sort of told you as much as we kind of know really there are lots and lots of different theories um we don't know exactly what ritual took place in the room um but we think that it would have mimicked to a certain extent the frescoes or the the, the frescoes would have mimicked the ritual so God, if I could go back in time, if I could go back in time in an invisible cloak, I 
absolutely would go to this room and see what was going on. And I love the fact that it was preserved. So, you know, Vesuvius destroyed loads of things, but perversely, it also, this was covered in volcanic ash, um, preserved these frescoes. Um, quite, quite extraordinary. An extraordinary artist, um, an extraordinary tale. Um, I guess, you know, over the years, we might we might unpick a little bit more of it, but I'm thinking that it most mostly it will remain mysterious to us. Um, Perhaps it was mysterious to, uh, to many other people, even in the first century BC when it was created. I don't know, but there we go. Villa de Mysteri. Um, apologies for the um, brilliant, it's brilliant, isn't it? We love it, don't we? <laughs> I'm gonna go. Have a great day, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining, thank you for listening, and I will see you very soon. Bye.